Hello again everybody, Mikey Gluski, and welcome to Igluski's Outdoor Sports. This video is about the customization of my 15 foot Pelican canoe. Now I have a video on my channel, YouTube channel, that you can look at on the original customization and this video also includes a lot of that. But uh, this has both the original and the modified version which you're looking at right there. So well, let's go back to the beginning. I installed aluminum bars to hold up the swivel back seats so I can rest my back. Those are the kind of seats that were on there that the drill is resting on. See, there they are. There's another one I replaced up front. And the wood that I have cut there is to support the bottom of the chair for extra added support. This is plastic and it'll crack, so I'm supporting it with plywood. So we're going to be in the water here shortly. Thought you'd like that. Okay, so next let's talk about the swivel seats. Now the reason I put the plywood there is for extra added support. Reason being is that there is a swivel bracket, steel swivel bracket that's wedged between the wood and the um, aluminum bars there. Now the screws run straight through the bars up through the wood and into the seat. Now you only have four holes in the, bar, in the uh, swivel bracket which left um, the seat had six holes in it for six screws. And that left the two front screws that you're looking at right there without anything to mount to. So um, when I sat in it, it actually leaned forward, which would have applied extra burden on the back two screws. Eventually when they got brittle, you know, in time they probably would have cracked the seats. So I made sure that that seat was, was nice and sturdy and it worked really well with that wood there. And another thing I'd like to add is them bars are laying on like an angle aluminum bar that are mounted, they're bolted into the uh, gunnels. Now those angle, are, uh, angle um, brackets there should probably be a little bit deeper, but you want to keep them high enough that they're on that gunnel for support on the steel. So I would get bigger angle, so bigger is deeper, maybe come down an inch because the um, main reason is your high center of gravity. So I bought Canon motor mounts and if you look underneath the black mount, I used one of them same angle pieces of uh, aluminum to support it to the, the, uh, the actual mount because I'm always pulling up and down, removing them and putting them on and those are bolted into the gunnels where the metal is for support also. Okay, here I just found some electrical hardware at Home Depot um, just for extra added support for my tow lines. And I put them both on the port and starboard and uh, in the front and the rear of the canoe. You know. So here's another shot of the motor mount. And if you look, it um, screws on with them star nuts. It tightens up some clamps that are underneath the gunnels on each side. And my favorite thing about this uh, motor mount is the hinge that's on the block so that if you hit something, like when you're landing the boat or when you're launching the boat, and you have shallow water, you're not tearing up your uh, prop. There's two coats on the outside. I gotta do another coat on the inside. This is the base coat. And I have black, brown, and two shades of green also. coming. It's going to be nice with that camouflage on there. I can't wait to see her finish. Can't wait to get her out on the water. So now let me tell you a little bit about the paint. So after you start out with your three coats of primer, and then you put a couple coats of your base tan color on there, you want to start from the lighter colors and go to the darker colors. And each time you put a leaf on there, you want to switch directions. You don't want them like ducks in a row. And you overlap, you know, and you just uh, change colors and you use your artistic ability to fill gaps 
and you end up with the black and I grabbed some sticks in the end you see the black lines there uh, I just held the sticks right up against the side of the boat and when you put the leaves on you put them right up against the side of the, the boat and you just you just spray it Good morning everybody, this is Mike Iglewski and welcome back to Iglewski's Outdoor Sports. Well, it's been a long time since I put out a video. So today, I'd like to show you my completed custom canoe. Now last year I had another video on YouTube and it was about the original initial painting and putting the seats on. So today I'm going to run through all of that again. If you want to refer back to that, uh, it's a pretty good video, so if you're going to custom a canoe out, it might be a good idea to look up my channel and uh, look up that video, and it might give you some good insight on a few good ideas that you might use on your own. Okay, I bought this canoe. This is a 15.5 Pelican, and I custom painted it myself. You can uh, refer back to the original video for that, but... Basically, I started with a light primer, and then I got darker as I go, using leaves and sticks as patterns, and you just kind of overlay everything. And every time you do it, it comes out a little bit different. And look, I, I dropped it when, I, when it was on the horses, so I got it. It's easy to touch up, I'll tell you that, you know, because everything overlays. So, originally, I put it, these were plastic seats. And you can take out the plastic seats and you get this. I got this at the Home Depot, you know, the home re the home remodeling store in Cleveland, Ohio. So I don't know what stores you have by you, but um, these one-by-one -one aluminum bars just mounted in. And there's a little L bracket, see, down in there. And I mounted them to the L bracket. And underneath, I put the wood in on there because the seat was leaning forward. And it didn't have no stability. So in order to get these screw, utilize these front screws so I don't crack the seat, I put in uh, some, uh, it, it was just press board, you know. And uh, and then I, I coated it with some uh, fiberglass resin. I'll tell you what, that'll last 100 years. Okay, so the seats work great. Try to keep them low. If I would do it again, I'd get a bigger L bracket, try to sit it, seat the seats that extra inch lower. Because, you know, center of gravity is important. But this canoe still does a great job. I take it out on Lake Erie with south winds as long as it's flat. And I take two guys out there. So I got the seats in, both seats. I took the center out and I put in more brackets and I mounted my ram mounts for my Garmin Echo Map SV unit, which I love very much. These are Garmin's, uh, you know, different various mounts. That's for a camera mount right there. And then uh, that right there is for your phone or radio. So here there's four rod holders. You can see them mounted up there for the front guy. I got two batteries. Now that particular battery is a 31M. And it has 
105 amp hours and I get about five six hours and uh, now right there is uh, die hard you can't find them anymore they stopped they were too good or something I don't know what the reason is but they took them off the shelves everybody's looking for that battery to die hard platinum so if you got one take care of it and it's got 105 amp hours on it so if you can find something that's relatively similar you need all the power you can get you know and that weighs 70 pounds that battery there is interstate and you know it's just a, a, a 50 amp hour and that runs all my lights in the front slide on slide off spotlight and it rotates up down left and right with a remote control I got my cup holders you know for pop yeah right right here is the mounting for my transducer which I don't like these mounts for one thing it's a it's a it's a bar in there aluminum bar and look how loose it got and it's just tightened by this screw you know very loose and another thing is see the clamp I had to put on this did not come with it this groove is obviously built into it for a clamp but without that clamp on there which did not come with it and if you're trying if you're thinking you're gonna put this on a canoe which is what it's built for you know so you can remove it easily that there's nothing easy about taking a clamp off you know so I don't like this product you know this is a ram product if you look look how the ball squeezing it's because I got it on there so tight now the thing is is that ball without the clamp on there that ball just it's rubberized and the ball just moves so the transducer is gonna flop back and forth maybe with a real ultralight transducer but I got a nice big transducer because I have a big fish finder so maybe if you had a little tiny little transducer on there it wouldn't move so much but it can't handle my unit right here I built a switch panel <laughs> and it's got a regular cigarette lighter adapter there and right here I got uh, uh, USB cables and I'm sweet I got four switches for my nav lights and all that you know nav lights uh, cigarette lighter in the front also see it up there all my wiring has been wrapped in the plastic ribbing keep it out of the way and all the connections were done with weatherproof heat treated connectors and right here I found this look how it wobbles do not like this product but it was a it's a cool idea but see I wanted to put my camera up there so what kind of picture if the winds blowing what kind of picture are you gonna get like that with that thing and then uh, you know this is my initial voyage so I, I got the idea I put an eye on there you know this is conductive it comes in and out that's it so both the same company I don't know what the heck that's for it don't fit in the hole you think they would have made the hole bigger so I got to call them up and see if they got a different something that's more adaptable maybe see if I get this in a hole Maybe it'll hold it tighter. So something's wrong there. I don't like the way that's set up. Obviously, this is for a different connector mount. Different housing here. So I set it all up. I was going to take it on a voyage this morning. See how she floated. I sprayed flotation up in. It has, it has a... Uh, false floor if you can see and I was losing little marbles of uh, foam last year before I redid it so I got some cans of flotation and and uh, sprayed some cans I drilled holes all along there and I sprayed flotation into the floor and now what that did is it made it pretty heavy but she still does a good job she did get heavy every one of them cans weighs a, a pound you know <coughs> So that's the canoe she got banged up that was a 
beautiful paint job a couple days ago. Then the straps broke on my seat. I got to have that fixed. But all in all, it's a pretty vessel. Oh, yeah, look at So here's my rod holder. And I found, went to that Home Depot store, and I found a bracket. Now, there's different kinds of brackets you can get for that. And this is just PVC. And I drilled a hole with a pin on the bottom, and I drilled a hole in the floor, and I glued it. So it sits tight at the bottom. And I strapped, I, I, I screwed it in, and that baby's tight. Tight as a drum. So, fellas, I hope you got some good ideas for my video for when you make your custom canoe. We'll see you out there on the water. Time to go fishing.